everyone. Welcome to this video on RLC series circuit. In this video, we'll be discussing about what RLC circuits are, how they work, and their applications. Let's break down this circuit into three parts. Say there's just the inductor part, and then we'll consider the case where there's just the capacitor part and only the resistor. Why I'm doing this is because we can then find out the reactances XL and XC offered by the inductor and the capacitor respectively. So in order to find out XL, let's just consider that there is this source Vm sine omega t and it is connected to the inductor through the resistor because we are not considering the inductor to be an ideal inductor. So there is going to be some R component in it. So there is going to be a current flowing through it. And we know that this I is going to be equal to 1 by L integration of V dt, where V is nothing but Vm sine omega t. So we can say that is equal to 1 by L integration of Vm sine omega t dt and we op obtain Vm by omega L sine becomes cos omega t there should be a minus sign this will become my i. So now uh, I can therefore obtain the value of xl so we can say that we know that v is equal to i x in this case x l. So therefore x l is going to be v by i. So I know this is v. So let me just take down the i on the other side and omega l on the other side. So omega l is going to be equal to v m by i. Let me take this minus sign into consideration and rewrite this as omega t minus of 90. So what we have now is omega L is my reactance and it is going to be lagging the voltage by 90 degrees. So if I draw a phasor, I can say that XL is equal to omega L from this and the phasor diagram would be such that this is the phasor, this is my V, this is going to be I into R that is the current uh, flowing through the resistor which would be in phase because the resistor does not cause any change in phase then this would be my xl so this is uh, uh, going to be i into xl right so the current flowing through the inductor is going to be lagging the voltage flowing through the inductor by an angle of 90 degrees. So this is for series RL. In the same way, we can actually obtain the value of XC. So if I consider that there's just uh, a source, the R and a capacitor connected to it, such that its voltage is VC, and the source is Vm sine of omega t. So when I want to find out the current, that would actually be equal to, I would be equal to C dV by dt. So this V is going to be nothing but C Vm sine of omega t. So we have to differentiate this. And what we get is Vm into C omega sine becomes cos omega t and then therefore we get c omega vm sine of omega t plus 90. So then this is my i. Again I can find out xc as v by i where v is going to be nothing but this and i is on the left hand side of my equation. So therefore xc precisely becomes equal to omega into C. So this is my capacitive reactance. We can now draw the 
uh, phaser diagram for this. So this is my uh, say voltage, the source voltage. Then this is going to be my uh, current through the capacitor. It is going to lead the voltage by 90 degrees. And therefore, IC into XC, right? The I into XC would be VC. So now, uh, having said this, we can just go back and look at our uh, RLC series circuit and put all of these together. So therefore, we are going to have a resistance over here whose value is, say, R. The reactance offered by the inductor would be XL, and that offered by the capacitor would be XC. The voltages would be VR, VL, and VC. And the current here is going to be I. So if I am going to draw a phasor diagram for this particular scenario, this is how it should look. So we'd be having, a, for example, the axis in this manner. And this is our V, voltage. And uh, this is going to be VC. And this is going to be VL. So uh, the current through R is going to be in phase with the source. The current through the inductor is going to lag the voltage by 90 degrees. So therefore, it is in this manner. And I would call it as IXL. Is, that is what is going to be VL. And the current in the uh, capacitor is going to lead the voltage by 90 degrees. So IC into XC is going to be VC. So let's uh, analyze this phasor diagram a little further. And we can say that uh, the overall voltage of this circuit would be Vs, for example, that is the source voltage, is equal to Vr plus Vc minus Vl. Now, this is going to be the case. I'll put a, a J over here to represent the complex uh, axis or the imaginary axis of the complex plane, whereas the uh, resistor and the voltage drop across the resistor is going to be aligned along the real axis of the complex plane. Now, if we look at this uh, phasor diagram closely, if the value of Xc is very small, then we see this voltage is going to be very small. In that case, the inductive part of the circuit is going to have a dominance over the circuit. So therefore, Vc minus Vl would not make sense. In that case, the phasor would look more in this manner. This is going to be Vl. And uh, this is going to be my Vc. And this is V. So the overall uh, voltage, resultant voltage, would actually be in this direction. This is going to be my Vs. This is the case when Vl is going to be greater than Vc. The circuit is more inductive. So we can't really put a minus sign here. We'll put a difference, a tilde over here, saying that whichever is greater, we are going to subtract the smaller quantity from that. So the second case is when Vc is greater than Vl. In that case, the circuit would uh, be more capacitive in nature. So Vc will have a higher dominance and Vl would be small. This is Vc, this is V, this is Vl. So the resultant would be in the direction as shown. So then it could be Vc minus Vl in the circuit. So this is the first case where Vl is greater than Vc. This is the second case where Vc is greater than Vl. Now there could be a third case where both Vl and Vc are going to be the same. If they are going to be equal, if Vl is going to be equal to Vc, then their magnitudes are going to be equal, but the direction, the phase direction is going to oppose each other. Therefore, they cancel out each other. So in this, what we are going to have is Vs is equal to Vr because Vc minus Vl will become equal to zero in the third case. This is the case when Xl is equal to Xc. Because we know that this is a series RLC circuit, so the currents through it is going to be the same. So therefore, Vs is uh, nothing but 
vr meaning that this is going to be equal to i into r this is the case because i into xl and i into xc have cancelled out each other because xl is equal to xc so therefore when this is the case when xl is equal to xc the circuit becomes purely resistive so let's summarize the three cases a little more clearly so for the series rlc circuit we see that xl is going to be equal to omega into l xc is going to be equal to 1 by omega into c this is what we first got then applying this to the series rlc we obtained that Vs is going to be equal to Vr plus J times of Vc tilde Vl, depending on whichever is greater. We can therefore also obtain the impedance of the circuit Z. How do we do that? So we know that I into Z, Z is the total impedance of the circuit considering the reactances as well as the resistance, is going to be I into R plus i into j times of xl tilde xc even if i change the order it's not going to matter because the greater one will be the first one from which the smaller quantity is going to get subtracted so all the i's the current is going to get cancelled out so we are left out with the impedance of the circuit as r plus j times of xl tilde xc therefore z the magnitude can be written as r square plus xl minus xc or tilde xc the difference the whole square whole root so this is going to be the per, uh, the value or the magnitude of the impedance of the series rlc circuit we came up with the phasor diagram and we saw that there are three cases the first case is when xl is greater than xc the second case is when xl is less than xc and the third case is when xl is equal to xc so when we apply these three cases over here uh, on the impedance we see that for xl greater than xc it is going to be a more inductive circuit which means that the phasor diagram is going to be in this manner, right? So the XL component is going to be dominating. So XL minus XC would be facing downwards, lagging the uh, other component, that is the resistive component, in-phase component. Now, when will this happen? This will happen when XL is going to be greater than XC, that is when the value of omega is going to be high. See, if omega is high, omega into L will be high and 1 by omega C will become low. So, when omega is high, XL will become higher and XC will become lower, right? Then, for this case, when XL is less than XC, it is going to be a more capacitive circuit. And this is going to happen when the values of omega, the frequencies are lower. The frequency of the source is lower because the source is a, an AC source. It's a sinusoidal source. So we can vary the frequency of the source. And for lower frequencies, the circuit will be more capacitive. And this is how the phasor diagram would look. So it will be XC minus XL. And this one would be R. This would be the impedance. In this case, this was the impedance. Now, for a particular frequency, I'll call it as omega r, where r represents resonance. In that case, xl is going to become equal to xc. So what is that particular omega? So if we equate it, we can say omega r l is equal to 1 by omega r c. So when this is the case, we can find out omega r. Omega r square is equal to 1 by lc or omega r is equal to root over of 1 by lc. If I want to write it in terms of uh, frequency, instead of angular frequency, I will get it as 1 by 2 pi 
root over lc so this is nothing but the resonant frequency now this is a very interesting frequency because at this frequency xl becomes equal to xc so therefore if i do that this component becomes equal to zero and therefore the circuit becomes purely resistor as i just told you so when the circuit is purely resistor we can say that the circuit rlc series circuit is operating at resonant frequency when it is operating at the resonant frequency we can also observe that the impedance of the circuit is the least because there is no reactance component to it there is only resistance and if there is any reactance component the impedance is going to go higher so if i plot a curve the impedance is going to be least at a particular frequency called the resonant frequency and at that particular frequency the impedance is going to be equal to r because it's purely resistor so this is the curve of the impedance and we can see how it is varying with the frequency for higher frequency it is going to be inductive in nature the circuit itself because xl will be greater than xc and for lower frequencies xc will be greater than xl so the circuit itself would act capacitive in nature now having said this there's one last point which we need to understand how would the current of the circuit be so see at resonant frequency the resistance or the impedance offered by the circuit is minimum therefore the current is going to be maximum so let me use a different color to represent that so this is how the current would be it would maximize at the resonant frequency and the value of the current at that point would be nothing but v m by r because the res, uh, impedance of the entire circuit boils down to r it becomes a purely resistive circuit at resonance therefore the current at that frequency becomes equal to vm by r so the green curve represents the current and how it varies with respect to frequency and the blue curve represents the impedance and how the impedance varies with respect to frequency rlc circuits find wide range of applications in a uh, case of audio tuning so we can use it to uh, tune our device to a certain frequency wherein the output of that device would be maximum at the resonant frequency and uh, we can also use it as a bandpass filter where it is uh, going to allow a certain range of frequencies to pass through it meaning that over those range of frequencies the gain of that circuit or the output from that circuit is going to be good as compared to the other frequencies and at resonant frequency both the inductive and the capacitive reactances cancel out each other and the circuit becomes purely resistive so that's all with today's video uh, please do subscribe to this channel and keep watching more such videos